Zor Zora slapped the wall of the tower, the brick under her fist sinking into the wall with a flicker of magic. A loud crack shook the tower, and one of the armor sets on display stepped off its pedestal. pedestal. Metal ground against me metal, and the sound shivered through Philip's teeth. Joanna took an unsteady step back. He nudged her aside. Another set of armor le leapt down from its display, and it ri ripped an old axe from the wall. Philip could see no way around them. Of course the wizard who had written a magical riddle in honor of her beloved wife hadn't left her defenseless. Up the stairs, he said, and shoved Joanna toward them. Run! They took off sprinting. Philip looked back only once, catching sight of the largest suit of armor carried, carrying Zora into what he could only assume was a safe room. All around him, suits of armor stepped from their platforms in the alcoves of the stairs and shook the dust from their joints. They moved with hollow footsteps, magic filling their empty forms, and a few drew swords from sheaths. Philip reached the next landing first, Joanna at his heels. A small suit of padded armor took a swing at Philip. He ducked, tear stumbling into the wall. Joanna passed him and grabbed his shirt. She tugged him up the stairs. I've always been terrified of po poets, he muttered, but I think I have an idea. Behind them, a set of scale armor climbed the stairs two at a time, and four sets of plate armor clang after it. One carried an axe, and another had ripped a monstrous pike from the wall. Phil lunged at the scale armor and rammed it with his shoulder. It teetered, top-heavy without a person inside of it. The scale armor fell, collapsing against the pike-toting armor behind it. They both slammed into the three other suits of armor. See, he shouted, improvise. Joanna gulped down air as they sprinted. I hate you. The stairs opened up around every bend, revealing living quarters and laboratories and libraries. Floor after floor they climbed, and on each floor, more objects joined the chase. A taxidermied fox nibbed at Philip's heels, and a kettle in a knitted cozy of orange, white, and pink spat tepid barley tea at Joanna. Philip kicked the fox away, and at the next landing, an ermine-lined robe took its place. He swatted away the robe's sleeves. How many floors are there? Joanna asked. Just keep going. He leapt over a bearskin bear rug and dove past the tenth landing. Find any landing with nothing on it. Joanna groaned. Their predators were a cacophony behind them, increasing in number and gaining on them with each step. Philip gasped, chest tight, as they neared the top. The uppermost landing was a small circular room with a glass of roof glittering with magic, two telescopes, and cushions on the floor. The door blocking it from the stairs was a flimsy wooden one, but Joanna shut it anyway. She jammed the long hairpin trying to stab her into the crack between the door and wall to keep it shut. The hairpin struggled but held. You owe us a rescue, heiress, Philip said, tapping his fingers against the dark-eyed cat brooch. Joanna prodded one of the telescopes with her toe. We'll have to climb down the side of the tower. They could attack us from above. We'll be vulnerable if we're clinging to the side of the wall, he said. The door behind them shook, wood splintering. Philip moved to the opposite side of the room. There was a small balcony overlooking the cliff, and far, far, far below them, the sea crashed against the rocks. Philip rubbed his eyes with his shirt. The cat brooch glowed in the corner of his sight. What's wrong with you, he asked it. Behind him in the tower, the door shook so hard he winced. He darted back inside and wanted to grab Joanna, and the brooch's eyes flickered out. He took one step onto the balcony. The brooch's eyes glowed. Vines, he muttered, and held his hands out. A few stories be below them, a vine unfurled from its spot, growing up the tower, and reached for him. More began to move around it. Good, a networks. The plan in his mind was held half-formed and deadly, and the only comfort was that it, if it failed, he wouldn't have to live with knowing he'd gotten them both killed. Joanna, come here, he yelled. A gauntlet broke through the door, and Joanna scrambled away from it, backing up into him. 
a full suit of plate armor painted in the reds and whites of a long gone noble house pulled the axe back and swung again, nearly cleaving the door in two. A dozen other enchanted objects dove for the gap, a handful wriggling. Joanna batted aside a small stuffed bunny with the flat of her sword. I have an idea, said Philip, but you have to trust me. The suit of armor tossed, tossed aside its axe and gripped the two sides of the shattered door, prying them apart. The fingers of the gauntlets flexed, magics crackling between them like stitches. I trust you. I trust you, she said. What are we doing? We're jumping, he said. Never mind. Joanna kicked a chair away from them. They have to go down if they're beheaded, right? No, they don't. The tower shook as the suit of armor took each step, a half dozen more suits behind it. All of them carried weapons as sharp as the day they had been forged. Philip glanced down at the brooch, still a flickering yellow. He dragged Joanna at the edge of the balcony and wrapped an arm around her waist. His other hand gripped the Sword of Truth. He hoped Briar Rose wasn't listening to this. Joanna nodded. Do it. Philip threw them backward, off the balcony. Joanna shrieked, fingers digging into his arm. He held tighter. The wind rustling up behind them and imagined the plants of the garden growing out along the cliff and weaving through the air like a web. Power thickened around them, cold and sharp. Philip twisted to look. The vines were covering the gap below, but through the holes he could see the waves of the sea eating away at the cliff and leaving behind jagged rocks poking up through the fog-like teeth. He, he needed more vines, and he needed more time. They were falling too fast. He squeezed his eyes shut and held the sword as far from Joanna as he could. The chill of his magic stole his breath, and everything went dark.